And welcome into the PHNX Sun Devil Shaw. I'm Anthony Totri. This is Eric Ruby. We've got DJ Danielle behind the Mac making all of the magic happen. Guys, do us a solid. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening on audio, leave a five-star review. Let us know what you like about this podcast. We already got JJ in here. We got Donald in the chat. I know we're going to have some more PHNX diehards hopping through in a minute. Before we get started to everything that we got cooking today, do us a solid. Go over to gophnx.com today. Click that Die Hard tab. And once you click that Die Hard tab, it's going to tell you everything that you are going to unlock when you become a PHNX Die Hard. Eric, fill everybody in. What happens when you become a PHNX Die Hard? Well, right off the bat, you get a shirt. Get a That's shirt. Good. You get a nice little like card, like a little carrying card. If somebody comes up to you and says, are you a PHNX Die Hard? Boom. You can pull the card out. Boom. That's great. But I think the number one thing besides all the extra content and extra access that you get, you guys get... The Die Hard Discord. Yeah. And the Die Hard Discord is by far Poppin'. and away the best place for you guys to talk sports. Like we got a lot of people in the chat here talking about fire Bobby Hurley or even fire Willie Bluequist, which is a different take for a different day. <laughs> um, but if you want to have those conversations with people who genuinely want to have that conversation or knowledgeable like ourselves and other big ASU fans, there's an ASU section that I are Discord, but then we have the Suns and we have the Cardinals and we have the D-backs, the Wildcats, all of the stuff in Arizona sports that you need. We have it over at gophnx.com and become a diehard. No big pokey today. He is uh, taking a much needed break. A little, but we're here. <laughs> well, we got you covered. We are we here. We got you covered. We are here. We got a lot to get into. Obviously, we're going to be talking about March Madness and, and Bobby Hurley put pen to paper oh, on geez. that contract extension. I'm sorry, Donald. Uh, so we're going to be talking, obviously, uh, about that. And if Arizona State will ever be relevant when it becomes you know, March Madness, the the greatest time of the year. We're going to be talking a little bit about Clemson suing the ACC, uh, now the second major program to sue the conference over the exit fees and that type of stuff. Also going to get into potentially some Arizona State players that you could see return to the Sun Devil basketball roster next season. Obviously the first year in the Big 12. But let's go ahead, kick things off with Arizona State and Bobby Hurley, uh, and just putting pen to paper in terms of that yeah. extension, um, obviously big news doesn't appear now that Arizona State will be moving off of Hurley, heading into what will be year 10 at the helm of the program. Uh, just your initial thoughts and feelings to, again, Arizona State pretty much doubling up and, and backing Bobby Hurley heading into their very first season in the Big 12. Um, yeah, I mean, it sure. Sure. Why not? I, th- th- listen, man. Listen, I know. I know we've set up here, and and, and Shane and us have have butted uh, butted some heads a little bit about. Yeah, the he's future, a body believer. Yeah, the future of Bobby Hurley and this program. And listen, man, give him one year. That like I'm at the point where it's it's got to be one year. Mm-hmm. And if it's any longer than that, or if next year doesn't go right, like it, there's no excuses. You have so many little caveats and excuses that you can use if you are Bobby's supporter right now. They have no AD. They have no funding. Give them a year in the Big 12. The recruiting class is coming in. Like there, There's enough in that camp of keep them yeah. that it, it's not the most like illogical, wild thought that they're just going to bring him back for another year. But if you don't think, and if Bobby Hurley doesn't think, and if Bobby Hurley supporters don't think, which Shane does, this is it. This first year in the yeah, Big Twelve, it has to be. It has if to be. If shit hits the fan right off the bat, it's oh, like it's done. Like yeah. this is not a long term thing. If he cannot adjust to the Big Twelve and fast, yeah, I think you see it in sports all the time. It's not necessarily with coaches, but you see it all the time with players. Right, you're you're on a prove it deal, right, where you have to go out there and you have to prove yeah. your worth to get a long term deal. I think for Bobby and this program, it's prove that you are the guy to lead the charge. You know, when, when Things go dark 
it's up to Bobby Hurley and company uh, and the staff to really push things forward in the Big 12. I want to get to JJ's comment earlier um, where he was talking about the recruiting class. Um, let's scroll up just a tad right there. Honestly, think this is the right move. Give Hurley a year in the Big 12 with the recruiting class he's bringing in in the core. He'll hopefully retain. Also yeah. saying uh, it's extremely early, but the fact no Sunnivals jumped into the portal off the bat is a good sign. Yeah, it's a good sign. But I mean, this college season isn't even done yet. Like, I think yeah. I think some people kind of want to let the chips fall where they may. And and maybe they are going to give ASU and Bobby some time to, to come to them. And, and we'll talk about some more specific people later. But I mean, listen, Bobby Hurley is the type of guy who can be good for this basketball program. Like if he's out there and he's on the recruiting trail, but he's also on the fundraising trail as much and he's going out there and he's like the reason why Bobby Hurley, it was such a big deal that he got hired here. Like it, it was because of the name. Yeah. And, and I, I'm not trying to diminish him to that because he is more than that. He's not just a Hurley, right? Like he's a smart guy. He's a good person. He's a good basketball coach, like in a vacuum, but I don't think he's been throwing his name around the way that he should. Like you have Bobby freaking Hurley at the head of your program. And and is he out there? And and I don't know. I've, I've heard things. I've, I've talked to people about things. I have not seen it personally for firsthand. So like, take this for what you may, like he's not out there as much as he should be. And maybe he's changing that. And maybe that was a thing of the past. But if you are going to survive in the courage, current landscape of college football, like I'm not just patting Kenny on the back because I like Kenny, but you have to take this approach of like, not, uh, I got to do this. I got to do that. But like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it so well. I'm going to fundraise so well because now that is a part of my job. Yeah. You know, and, and if Bobby can, can get to that granted a year too late, but if he can get to that, plus like JJ said, maybe hire a, uh, offensive minded assistant coach, like how we had Nate Oates back in Buffalo. Like there's, there is a recipe for success here. The problem is like, does he want to get there? And I think he wants to be successful, but does he want to do the things that maybe go beyond coaching that would make you successful? Yeah, I look, I get that side of it. I think, and, and it's something when we talked about Herm Edwards of the football program, like you sit in a living room and you're throwing around the name Bobby Hurley the same way that you're throwing away, then you're, th you're throwing the name Herm Edwards. It doesn't mean anything, I think, at this stage. I think to the parents, Right, you you to the donors, in, not to, not to the recruits, to the donors. Okay, and, to and the again, people maybe, who have the maybe. money. But again, if you have the money, if you have the money, you are a major donor to Arizona State University, and you're sitting across the table from Bobby Hurley, and you're asking, why should I give you a million dollars? Why should I give you, you know, one point five million dollars to to go mess around nil, whatever? And realistically. What's the answer that Bobby has? I think there's a vision, but let's get into but, Arizona State as a program. Okay, and 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 I and I get that, right? Like, and in, in all this conversation about Bobby, we've talked about how he is handicapped because of what is going on with the athletic department around him. Yeah, what is going on with his basketball program, fan buy, and everything like that. Like, nobody's saying that Bobby's fumbling like the perfect situation here, but. It's not if perfect, you're, no. If, if you're the head coach of a program and you can't sit down and sell that program to people, like, listen, dude, you can spin zone anything. You made me spin zone being an athletic director and cutting two of the most successful sports at ASU. And you know what? I fucking spin zone. Then, then, then spin it. Like, spin it. Okay, here, here it is. Here, here is how you sell Arizona State Sun Devil basketball. To donors. To donors. As you've seen in my nine years here, when we hit heights that other people did not expect. Yeah. When we became almost the number one team in the nation, the last undefeated team in the nation, the term guard you was popular among all of college basketball. When you've seen guys turn into the NBA, like a Lou Dort, turn into really good, solid players, and you've seen what I can do at its heights. I sit back and I wonder, well, why can't I do that consistently? And part of that is I simply, I don't have the resources that I want in order to pour into this. And I will continue to pour into this. And as you'll see, like, I'll turn the roster over if I need to turn the roster over. Like, I'll get in guys' faces. Like, I'll, you know, you if you don't think I care, then you're not watching ASU basketball. But what I need is the support. What I need is the resources to not just make it a flash in the pan in a season and be up and down. I need the help. I need help to be mm -hmm. consistent. But you've yeah. seen, you've seen that I can do good. You've seen I have, that I can, I, have. I can hit heights yeah. and, and you know that I know what it takes to be on a team that wins a national championship. Yeah. You know that 
I've as a player, seen it. as a player. But I've seen it. But I've seen it. I, I, I've seen it from my brother. I've seen. You've I seen have it from seen, my brother. I come yeah. from a family of uh, of successful coaches. Like you, you know that I know what I need to do. And it, but it, am I able to do it right now? No. And that's why I need you. Like that's the spin zone. You're right. You're right. That's you're right. But you, you say things as again being Bobby Hurley and on the flip side of that coin, if you're a donor, right? And if you're a donor who is genuinely a, a, a businessman that you you want to see, any good businessman wants to see a return, right? Obviously, yeah. you're donating NIL. You're not necessarily looking to to see money It's not in a return. money-making opportunity. No, but no. you're looking to see results. Correct. Right, so you bring up, again, Bobby Hurley in Arizona State. You've seen him go to the highest highs, right? But that same year where you had the highest highs, which, mind you, was seven, eight, Six, seven years yeah. ago at this point, I'm you old. lost in the first four yeah. to Syracuse. Yeah. Right? Right. And then after that, you look at the last four years, you've made one NCAA tournament. You lost in the first round. Three of the last four seasons, you haven't had 15 wins. Like, yeah. And now, now not only that, but now you're heading to a dominant conference. Not just a dominant conference, a record-breaking conference. Big 12 recorded, uh, it was set a Big 12 record, eight teams selected to the NCAA tournament you got houston as a one seed in their very first year you've got iowa state set to be a number two seed you've also got a three seed in baylor a four seed in kansas a six seed in byu a six seed in texas tech a seven seed in texas and a nine seed in tcu my. Oh my. and that's without even okay. bringing up that's without even bringing up that arizona and colorado both made the ncaa tournament this year yeah and they're also going to be in that and conference. utah ain't bad either and now you're going to play all of those teams you okay. just got off okay. having to play utah <laughs> Cal, Stanford, you played nobody. Can I make one thing clear is that I agree with you, but I will continue, <laughs> I will continue to spit. Okay, and I want, the, I want the chat and I want people to understand this because somebody's going to come in and they're going to be like, oh my God, you flip-flop. No, this is the spin zone, okay? This is the spin zone. If I'm Bobby Hurley right now and you have a million dollars that I want, I've actually overachieved. Dude, shut the listen, hell listen, up, listen, dude. listen, 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 no, listen, okay, listen, 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 this is why Bobby needs to be on his team, right? I've actually overachieved. That's crazy. Listen, uh huh. you've seen what I can do, and yes, the lows get very low, but you come in with this arena, with this NIL program, oh. with these facilities, with this sort of fan buy-in, mm -hmm. and you come in and do better. I don't think you can, because you know what? Until we turn around the funding... Until we turn around the buy-in for this program, which I will do everything in my power to do, but I can't donate the money. I can't give the money. But you've seen I can get good players with the resources that I have. Maybe I can't build a complete team, but if I had an extra mil, two mil, three mil, I could do that. Yeah, maybe. I could do that. Maybe. And you know what? Maybe we need to renovate the arena. Maybe we need to get new practice facilities. I can't do that. I can't do that myself. Name another coach who could walk in here and could do that. Again, I, I don't believe this. I don't this think is, any coach could walk is, in and do it right now because there's not an athletic director to okay. make decisions. And then that's all and that's also like like I don't have an athletic director, and the athletic director I had before was crap. I have a president who doesn't buy into this stuff. Like, what I need is resources. Like, I am a good coach. I am a coach that players like. And sure, a lot of them leave, but a lot of them weren't good fits. And I have been playing. But were they not good fits, or were they simply you didn't evolve this, the offense around the players? I agree with you. Where you this did, like, sucks because I do you agree with you. don't have to play you. that role anymore. We got a, a 999 super chat from Donald saying, Fire Bobby Fund, I am juiced today. We'll throw that in the Fire Bobby Fund for you, Donald. But That's crazy. The Fire Bobby Fund is also our, uh, our Sun Burrows Fund. There you so go. There you go. But in, look, in crazy. reality, like you get players. And players that are in the NCAA tournament that we're going to talk about a little bit later <laughs> yeah. on in the show. Oh, that yeah. have had really, really uh. great seasons. And again, you've got talent on this roster, right? But from a very basic perspective of looking at the guys that Arizona State had on their roster to the way Bobby Hurley's teams run in the past, you knew one of two things was going to happen. A, either it wasn't going to be a fit offensively, yeah. right? Because Bobby's offense runs very different than the type of players that are on this team. Or you were going to get a needle in a haystack and Bobby was going to change the offense to fit the players he had on the roster. And you almost had a little bit of both. Like, it was just such a terrible mix from start to finish that, like, you really do need to wipe the slate clean in your first season. But again, my argument here is Arizona State, Bobby Hurley, everybody before that, like, there's never been a time for Arizona State to, quote-unquote, answer the question in the headline, be relevant in March, right? The time that every college basketball fan truly gives a shit about, the Arizona State Sun Devils haven't in the last 20 years really given Sun Devil fans something to, to get up and be excited for in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. There have been 80 
NCAA tournaments. Arizona State has made 17 of them. That is 21%. That is, what, one-fifth? That is awful if you are making the NCAA tournament one in every five years. Yeah, I mean, especially as, as a program where you can even look at some of the players who have come through here and be like, wow, those are, those are really good players. But you still look at the success in the long term, and, and you also look at the players that are out there. And like, now I am out of my Bobby mode, and, I, and I'm back to my, my real. Welcome back, mode. Eric Ruby. Thank you. And, and, and I do look at this program, and I say, like, listen, yeah, there, there are certain things that maybe he can't control, right? But then what is he controlling that he can and that and that's where it comes down to me where I'm like, okay, you mentioned it about the offense, right? Like, it is up to a basketball coach to recruit, keep, and get the best out of your players. Correct. And if you can recruit a player and you get them on your roster, but then you say, you mold to what I want, not the other way around, that is A, not a recipe to keep that player on your roster, and B, not a recipe for success. Now, I understand certain coaches, you have to have your like fundamental, like, this is my philosophy. And Bobby, I'm not saying completely take that away. You still want to cause chaos on defense? You still want a full court press? Like, you want to do that type of crap? Fine, fine. But if you cannot realistically look at your roster and say, does player A play better like this or like that? And the answer is that, but you keep choosing this, like it's it's not, it's just not going to work. And then it makes me lose faith that when you do go to the Big 12, everybody's, oh, this recruiting class. Oh, watch out for this recruiting class. Oh, watch out for this recruiting class. Like, no. Yeah. Until, until they are here, and I know for a fact that they are playing well because there's a system built around them, built around the players. Like, that's how basketball works now. If you're an NBA coach, sure, you can have a philosophy. Frank Vogel has a philosophy of having an athletic rim-running big who likes to defend the rim. You want to know who his center is this year? Yusuf goddamn Nurkic. Okay? And you know what? You still find a better way to use him. And is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but you find a way to use him, and you don't see that with Bobby. In fact, you look at all these players from this past season, and you're like, how many of you were in your ideal role? Genuinely, how many? Maybe Jose Perez? We saw where that got and everybody. And even then, even like, then, like, that's, that's why it didn't make so much sense, because you bring up a player like Jose Perez, who you knew when he got in here, if you watched basketball first off, what Jose Perez did at any of his other million and five different schools, right? A uh, million and four. There you go. He's a very different type of player. He's not a let's run up the court and no. like let's be that guy. He is strictly an ISO, let me back you down, do some Put post, post moves. Yeah. Either I'm getting to the free throw line or I'm hitting I'm hitting my shot, right? Yeah. Like that never fit Bobby's system. Frankie fits the system. Ace fits the system. You look at some of the bigs, Sean Phillips and Brian Salabongi don't really fit this style of system. Does and, Sean Phillips fit any style of system? No, but you look to years past, right? And I think you see a guy like a Warren Washington who was on this team right. last year or a Devin Cambridge. Those two guys specifically, in my mind, they fit Bobby's system right. to a T. And I think Warren even gave you more of that because he had an element, in my mind, where he could pull up and he could take a mid-range shot yeah. if he wanted to. Devin Cambridge, he is an athletic wing that is going to run the floor. He's got a three-point shot, and he's a hustle player. Yeah. This year, you didn't have those types of no, guys. No, and you didn't adjust. And it's no, like, you, that's and next, exactly and, it. And next, and next year, you might. And next year, you might have the guys that, you, that run your offense perfectly, and that's awesome. I don't want a coach who's handcuffed by themselves. Like somebody who's like, it has to be this way and that is it. Because then when you get put in a situation where maybe you lose your best player, maybe somebody leaves for the transfer portal. Hell, maybe somebody goes and plays professional basketball literally one game before your season ends. And if you are not willing to adjust, you're not willing to approach things from a different perspective, like you're screwed, especially in this era of college basketball. You're screwed. And don't even get me started on like the microcosm of this, of in-game adjustments. Yeah. Like, don't launch 23s if you're not hitting them. Like, d like, have some semblance of awareness of what is going on and understanding that maybe what you want to do is not always what's best to do. And, and that is a lot of the times where I feel like this disconnect comes because there's no doubt in my mind. I listened to his post-game press conference after they lost to Utah. There is no doubt in my mind that Bobby Hurley wants this to be a successful program. Absolutely. That Bobby Hurley wants to show up to ASU and be proud of the basketball program and the product that they're putting out there. But the problem is you can't just want it. You can't just will your way into it and say, I wish that this would happen. I want this to happen. You have to 
take action. You have to change yourself. You have to change your approach if it's not working. And maybe he will. But I don't know that. I haven't seen any of that over the last nine seasons. And the see, only thing I've seen changing is the players. And, That's and, it. And part of that, right, is, again, you talk about nine seasons and trying to understand the, fundam the fundamentals of how to, how to do this correctly. And I think you look at the past nine seasons and you're like, you know what? We've had the luxury of being able to do this in a conference that isn't really – too deep in terms of college basketball. Now, top heavy, you've always had Arizona, you've always had UCLA, you've usually had Oregon, but outside of those three teams, you haven't really been going week in, week out in conference play and having to play college basketball giants. Well, now, just like I said, now guess what? Now when we go to conference play next season, you don't get to play Cal. Nope. You don't get to play Oregon State. You don't get to play a up and down Colorado team. You don't get to play Washington. You know who you get to play? You get to play one seed Houston. You get to play Baylor. You get to play Iowa State. You get to play TCU. All teams that we just talked about being in the tournament. So again, my argument here isn't necessarily that it's a whole Bobby issue, right? It's an Arizona State issue, a yeah. commitment to the program issue. However, if you couldn't get it right in nine years, if you couldn't win the Pac-12 tournament once, what makes you think you're going to do it in the Big 12 when guess what? Instead of having two, three teams in the NCAA tournament every year, we've got eight. We've got 50% of the goddamn conference in the NCAA tournament. we got 50% of the goddamn conference winning 20 games a, 20 games and, a season. And think about the bottom end of that, of the guys that didn't make the conference. Like Part of the reason why the records are so bad was because they were playing these top teams. But if they were in the Pac-12, who knows what their record would be? And, and like you're right. Like and we're we're on we're on the same page here, like one hundred percent on the same page. And I don't think anybody who is aware of ASU athletics would be dull enough to not acknowledge that the state of the athletic department, the lack of an athletic director, the lack of buy-in from the president, and, and all of that does play a significant factor in yeah. all of this. But again, the reason why I can't take that, I can't take that as a full-on excuse. Like it, it is Kenny. And I, I try to not resort to this too much. But you've seen a program in ASU football that I don't even know if it's arguably like they were in a worse spot yeah. than what ASU basketball is yeah. right now. They were like self-imposed bull ban, awful head coach who ran them into the ground, no fan buy-in. Like you, you were, you were cooked. You were absolutely cooked. But you want to know what happened is you got somebody who came in and they understood the system. And they said, I'm going to play by these rules. I know the hand that is dealt to me and look at what he's done. Yeah. Like there's, there's a difference between throwing your hands up and accepting the fact that the He's playing situation, a different game. Yeah. That the, that the situation Bobby's sitting down at a blackjack you. table and they ask him if he wants to hit and he says, go fish. Like that's, that's what we're doing here. Yeah. You're playing the wrong fucking sport. Maybe it's, maybe you were doing it in 2006, right? Maybe 2006, maybe 2010 even. That's how you do what you wanted to do. But now it's different. Now it's different. The rules are different. The game is different. The system is different. If you don't evolve, you're done. You have to be at this point. So we say all this and sum it up to, to be like, look, next year in the Big 12, get it right or get going. Yeah. Because that's what has to happen. Otherwise, we are going to play in this lovely carousel where every year we get to pick it, pick a different horse, and we're just going to go round and round in bullshit, getting our ass beat by Big 12 teams that are better, with better coaches, better players, better facilities, better everything. Yeah, and by the way, all the people in here who are uh, going pro, Bobby, I know you are U of A fans. I've seen <laughs> you and I've produced the U of A chat. Daniel, you had something that you uh, wanted to add? Oh, yeah. Uh you guys good? We good? Taking a breath? No, we're not uh, good. I was just going to say, to your point, Eric, uh, ASU basketball or being in a, ASU football being in a worse place, I think it's easier. I think ASU basketball is in a worse place because ASU football has a history of success. There is no history That's of success. You can there fall is back something you can say. At least with that. ASU's been to a Rose Bowl, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. There is a history of success that you, yeah. can, you can fall back on. 
that does not exist for ASU basketball. No, I you, you are right. There there is a historical element to it. And like, yeah, it also is usually easier to get people to donate money and, and to buy in for football for sure. It's it's not a direct one to one comparison, but like there is just a stark contrast when you see a guy like Kenny come in and almost make the system work for him instead of the opposite. And and that's what we're seeing here. And like the I think the gambling analogy is is good because like if if the game has changed, like you're gonna keep losing money. Yeah, you're just, you're gonna keep losing money because you're not you're not playing the right game. And you know where you can play the right game though. Tell, Tell me. Truth. Tell me. It's at Gila River Resorts is, and Casinos, buddy. Because listen, I know that if Bobby Hurley was at Gila River Resorts and Casinos, he'd be making money. And he's uh, not playing Go Fish there. No, he's not, he he's not playing Go Fish over there. And you're not playing Go Fish either on their state of the art <laughs> gaming floor that has over 800 slot machines, no Go Fish tables, but they do have 15 blackjack tables and live table games. Not to mention Arizona's largest casino sports book, uh, the BetMGM sports book, which is just a fantastic play to place to watch some yeah. games. Um, I know that uh, March Madness is coming up, and uh, ASU fans, you're probably Probably gonna have no vested interest except for which second round team is going to upset AS or U of A. Uh, so you can come watch that game. I think we're gonna have some pretty cool events out there during that. Plus, if you don't want to come to events, you just want to go have a little staycation, you know, hang out by the pool, you know, eat somewhere anywhere that's upscale to approachable, a rooftop, a uh, little side poolside uh, meal. You can do all that at Gila River Resorts and Casinos because at the end of the day, you just do you. Visit playatgila.com for more details. But if I have to get there, Toe Tree, and I'm running low on gas, like, help me find out where to go. I, like, mean, I, I rely know, on you man. for a lot of you things. You already know. It, it's Circle K. I know ah. Donald picked up a, an energy drink this morning. He dropped that in the Die Hard Discord, I imagine. He got that from our lovely friends over at Circle K because they have Everything under the sun when it comes to snacks, great deals, and so much more. They've also got a free membership program, guys, called Inner Circle that's going to help you save 25 cents per gallon on your first five fill-ups. And not only that, look, after your first five fill-ups, you're probably like, well, why would I use this app anymore? And it's because they're going to help you save money every single day after those first five Phillips. We're talking save three cents per gallon every day. You're going to get every sixth free on a selection of Circle K products, pizza, coffee, ice cold fountain drinks, and more. Just join Inner Circle for free by downloading that Circle K app today. Terms and conditions apply at participating locations. Visit CircleK.com for details. Donald and Chat, UNC versus that other team is happening. Mark my words, the Caleb Love UNC drama is too much of a moneymaker to pass up. Ooh, that would be a good game. I hate how good of a game that would be. Yeah, look, we're gonna talk some some former ASU players that are in the to? turn. Yeah, we are, and then but then we'll talk about some maybe some players that you could see return for Arizona State Do we next have season. To? We talked about we, <laughs> hey, look, we talked about I'm building kidding, it up. I'm Part kidding, of it I'm starts kidding, kidding. with retaining some of the talent on the roster, which has been a little bit tougher for Bobby Hurley and company um, over the last few seasons. But specifically, you look at players in the NCAA tournament um, that you know you're you're going to see if you're an Arizona State fan. And I want to start with the one that's probably had the best season in DJ Horn. Um, over at NC State, averaging nearly 17 points a game. NC State, they won their conference tournament. Um, they had an absolutely ridiculous run just beating up on teams um, in, in the ACC. So it, it's crazy to see DJ Horn again, one of those players that didn't necessarily leave Arizona State for NIL, left it to get a little bit closer to home. But nonetheless, it hurts to see DJ have this, the type of season that I feel like ASU fans felt that you know he should have had here. Yeah, he, he definitely could have had here. There was, there was definitely need for somebody who played like him. Uh, over here at ASU. And yeah, you look at that. I mean, just the points per game, like 16.9 point, points per game for a team at ASU right now. One of the best three-point shooters in uh, college basketball. Right, a and ASU is one of the worst teams. Yeah. Uh, one of the worst offensive teams in the country, period. Not just the Pac-12, the country. And so a lot of these guys that we're looking at, like they could have significantly helped with that. And it is unfortunate to just think like, it's another indictment, and I hate that it comes back to this because it's going to feel like we're beating a dead horse, but it is another indictment on, on Bobby, and I understand that maybe the circumstances of the DJ Horn a little bit different little bit with different. wanting to move closer to home and everything like that, but like there's a long list here of very important players to their teams that are good and successful, and you'd have to imagine that if two, three, maybe even just one of these guys stayed here— we could be talking about a different type of different ASU season. season. Yeah. And like, look at a guy like Jalen House. Like, that's that's a tough, that's a yeah, tough that's one to swallow. One. At New Mexico, averaging again 16 points a game. You talk he had about a crazy play, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, you you look at just Arizona State this past season, right? And the big issue, of course, was the offense. Right there, you retain two players. Uh, uh, and House hasn't been a part of this program in, in a minute, but House, DJ Horn, like two scores, right? Yeah. That in theory, you pair with guys like Frankie Collins, Ace Wolf. 
Jemiah Neal. We're talking about a much different team if you're running a system that fits them. Yeah. Right? These two players found, I don't want to say better opportunities, but better fits better for what they do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and clearly it's paid off. Both of these guys headed to the tournament, but it doesn't stop there. Duke Brennan, who was a freshman at Arizona State, transferred to GCU, was an absolute dog on the glass. Something, yep. again, for Arizona State, what was their big issue? First off, giving up like rebounds to other teams and then yep. not being able to get offensive rebounds themselves because they didn't have size. Duke Brennan's not the biggest dude in the world, but at 6'10 at GCU, he did exactly what it needed to do. Seven points a game, six boards per game. Um, and, and for ASU, again, that would have been huge to have a guy off the bench that could have provided you the level of play, especially on the glass, something for Arizona State's bigs that they just didn't have this season. Yeah, and, and they didn't have a, a, a massive presence down low. Like, technic- like, technically speaking, they did. Sean Phillips is huge. But they didn't have somebody who would go in and, and impose their will. And that's why you look at a guy like Warren Washington as well. Yeah, like, almost, tech. almost 10 points per game, 7.4 rebounds per game. If that was the type of production they were getting out of somebody like Sean Phillips, this, again, th- this team so much went wrong. So much went wrong that if just one thing was different, and I know that people are going to say, oh, you have to live in the past. Oh, you have to think about what if, what if, what if. What do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? You come up with a better idea. Listen, like if Warren Washington was on this team right now, and that was the presence down low, and that was an element that ASU was able to implement, a lot of the other pieces around them would fit so much better. Like we're talking about an Adam Millers. We're talking about a Frankie Collins, a Jemiah Neal. Like all of those players play better when they have somebody besides Jose Perez who could be a paint presence. Yeah. Yeah. 6'4 Jose Perez. Like it's it's different when a guy is above 6'8". Or, and it isn't named like Alonzo Gaffney who likes to live outside the three-point line. Like it's just – it's different and it opens a bunch of stuff up. That man will haunt my nightmares up. for 30 years to come. I know it. I know he will. I'm going to wake up in a cold sweat and 30 Alonzo years Gaffney's from now bricking a three. at like 56 years old. My wife's going to be like, what? Are you like okay? I'll be like, I saw Alonzo Gaffney take a three. It was his 11th of the game and we were in the first half. Like that, <laughs> that's what like my life is going to be like I feel like. Um, but it, it's, I mean, you even talk about a guy like Devin Cambridge, who obviously didn't play a whole lot this season, um, at Texas tech because of injury. But we talked earlier about his fit Warren Washington's fit at Arizona state. It just sucks and hurts to see these guys, um, you know, have such great seasons, not in a Sun Devil uniform. Like it's good for, like, I'm happy for them. Like, I don't, I don't yeah, usually I don't, root I don't against wish them any ill will. I know that sometimes when a player leaves, like, of course, if it's under weird circumstances, like let's say like Jed fish, like circumstances, right. And then you're going to be, you're going to be upset about it. Yeah. And you're not going to like be sitting back and say, Oh, I really hope that they do awesome at their next school. But I, I don't blame really any of these guys yeah. for trying to find a better situation for them. And the fact that they have does shine a negative light back here, whether you like it or not. Like if, if you see players who in the college game are going out and having success immediately after leaving you, it hurts. It, it hurts. It's not fun. And, and it is a reflection of like, you gotta like look in the mirror, right? Like it's a reflection of what it is. I mean, we saw it with Remy Martin, right? Remy oh, Wayne, don't bring it up. He won a national championship at Kansas. So that obviously that, that, that hurts. It, it is what it is. Right. But I think moving forward again, you got to talk about players that you want to keep. D- Donald says, and I'm, I'm assuming because I know Donald stands on this, the not holding things against players for leaving says that we are not real fans. Is he talking about us or is us. he talking about the, no, the us. people? He's talking the about me and you. That we're not fans? That we're not real fans because we don't care that people leave. It's not as much that I don't care. Like, it pisses me off that they left, but like on a human level, and you, like, you look at this basketball program and you look at what they've done afterwards, like you can't help but just be like, like I get it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is what it is, right? Again, there's a perfect situation for everybody. And I think, again, I think when you're talking pros, you're talking like NBA, NHL, NFL, I think it's a different argument that you can make. I think for me, again, in, in certain circumstances are different. Like a Jose Perez, I'm not going to let him get off the yeah, hook. He's a 25-year-old grown man. Um, and that's a different situation. But um, yeah, see, I, okay. I think he, he's talking okay. about other things. I think because I know, I know that that uh, Donald is very much like a "you leave my team, you're dead to me" kind of guy. Yeah, and, and so I thought I, he was talking. I, I, I understand that. I totally get that. Sorry, Donald. It's just too much PTSD, man. <laughs> yeah, Donald, too much. Anytime, everything that I say, Donald disagrees with. So I just assume when Donald's saying anything negative, that's it's fair. actually directed towards me. But again, I, I think, it, like I said, we we talked about these former players, and I think you look to next season and what Bobby Hurley needs to do, mm-hmm. and part of it starts with retaining guys on the roster. And I want to start off with Adam Miller, who, you know, sent out a a pretty promising tweet 
I think if you're an Arizona State fan, just tweeted the pitchfork emoji. Uh, you, um, wait, you hope, man. I like, mean, I hope. would be absolutely shocked. It, I'll be honest with you. There are two players that we're going to talk about that would it would blow my mind if they left. Um, Adam Miller is one of those, and then Frankie Collins is the other. The only way I see Frankie Collins leaving is if he decides to throw his name in the NBA draft again, um, which that's a very real possibility. But I really, really um, – I'm – Pretty confident that Ace and Frankie Collins will be Sun Devils heading into next season, which, again, being able to keep those guys, specifically Frankie Collins, who was really the heartbeat of this roster, and then an Ace Wolf, who I know uh, down the stretch didn't have the greatest season. Uh, he had a weird season. He had a weird season. You know, right? A weird beginning off, of the season. Exactly. Like It, it was just strange circumstances. Needs a fresh start, but there's no denying that Adam Miller is a very talented basketball player. So I think being able to retain those two um, would be huge. For Arizona State moving forward, specifically, um, you, you talk about a conference in the Big 12 that we've already, you know, discussed is so, so juiced. I think it's important to keep those two guys um, that, again, when you're getting transfers, you're getting new guys in the right. recruiting class. They understand what the the vibe and re- what this team is about. And if you do have, let's just say, like a good recruiting class, right? And you do Which have, they do. Arizona right, State like, has a great recruiting again, class. And, and, but that doesn't always promise. That doesn't always promise either instant success or success, period, on the collegiate level. We've seen it with years past. There have been guys who have been touted, like, wow, how did ASU get this five-star? How did ASU get this four-star? And then they come in, and they don't play like a five or a four-star. They play fine, or in some cases, Tayshaun Cherry. They play like crap, but like— Tayshaun Cherry was an anomaly. No, I know, but that's just still the one that comes to my (sighs) mind, like— because like I'm not I'm not out there on like the high school level like grinding high school tape you yeah, know no and that's fair and, and so like I'm sitting here and I'm like okay I'm not just going to buy in based off of like stars and rankings and everything like that um, especially for basketball when things can be so up and down yeah. almost wishy washy to a sort and depending on the situation but Frankie Collins coming back is massive key to succeeding next year. Like, I would not blame him for testing out NBA draft waters, especially yeah. because now it's not like a do or die situation when it comes to that. Um, Adam Miller, like you said, I, I do hope that he's back. I, I think that he falls into the category of a, a of a certain type of player that when everything is built right around them, that they can play really, they, they really well. Succeed. But when there's deficiencies that they're meant to make up for that they shouldn't around them and then it takes them completely out of their game yeah and, and i know that's that's like a lot of players but a guy like frankie collins doesn't fall into that mold for me because a guy like frankie will just go right and, and you can kind of drop him into any team and, and he'll find his way like adam miller can be a killer right but when you ask him to do like five other things along with being a killer you're not going to get that adam miller experience yeah. that you that yeah. you expected and so you would hope those two come back i'll also be honest to you I don't put too much weight into a tweet right now. Well, and that's fair. I, I do have information, though, uh, yeah, on those two specifically that make me feel very confident that those two would uh, would return. I think you um, dropped a little flex there. No, nah, it's just, a little flex. It's, like I said, it's it, it's stuff that I— You're going to rip through that shirt with that I, flex. I feel like it's. I'm pretty confident that those two will be back. Talk about another player that had kind of an iffy season that I think a lot of fans expected a lot of this season in, in Jemiah Neal. Yeah. Um, still has eligibility. I know he entered the portal last season, opted to come back. Uh, so you, you talk about Jemiah Neal, and, and I think, again, it's a it's a really interesting situation about a Jemiah Neal because how many times do we do we discuss, oh, well, this is this is his year. This is the moment. This is the time before we're just yeah. like, you know what, maybe this that this isn't the right role for him on this team. I think Jemiah Neal back in an Arizona State uniform would be awesome. I'm I'm not going help. into next season though claiming Jemiah Neal as the second coming mm. of a Des Cambridge or a DJ Horn um, or a Remy Martin because he's not that type of scorer. I think he 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 has the ability to be a really talented basketball player. Yeah, and and again, it he's not a one. He's I'm not, not a trying one, to number one no, option. I'm not trying to like use the same situation for everybody, but he's another person that if the pieces around him were more solid and the system was more fit to him, he would be better and that doesn't exactly mean he'd score more points it doesn't exactly mean he'd be used more it just means that he'd be put in the right role and Jemiah Neal as a you know injury replacement starter and six man coming off the bench that can come in and light up a game and and be a spark plug offensively like that's a recipe for success especially in college basketball like you you need those kind of guys you really do but when, again, those expectations that we're talking about where it's the second coming of, of a savior for this team, like you can't, you can't watch this past season and expect that from anybody, even Frankie, even though he's the most likely to do it. But at, at a certain point, you just need more around them. 
And if they can see and they've talked to Bobby and, and they know the recruits coming in, what's going to be around them? Like, I, I wouldn't be shocked if they if they stay either. But then you can also say, well, like, what was it like last year? Would that be a repeat? And do I trust in the Big 12 that it's going to be enough? And in the current day of college basketball, am I going to be in a better situation, making more money, playing more minutes, better for my long-term future than than here? And, and I think that that is always, I think that's always on the table with anybody because you never know. Yeah. Who's going to come in and say, you know what? One of our guys left and they were taking up a lot of our NIL money. Here, let's let's offer that to you, Frankie Collins. And I'm not saying that Frankie would take that and I, I wouldn't expect him to. But like when money gets involved and opportunity gets involved and the sour taste of last season's in your mouth, like it's just it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's like I said, we live in a very weird, weird spot in college athletics as it stands right now. And the last three guys that I do want to kind of talk about as a group here because I think going into the season again, there were mild expectations for some of them. Uh, but again, really young guys that I think you want to see develop in an Arizona State jersey. We're talking about Braylon Green, Sean Phillips Jr., and Akil Watson, who all really fit different spots. I think Braylon Green is a traditional one, maybe a two. Akil fits more of that power forward four spot, and then Sean Phillips Jr., a true five. Um, I think those guys, again, they didn't have great seasons. A lot of them didn't play a whole lot. Uh, Sean Phillips Jr. obviously played the, the most out of him in LSU transfer. I think, again, those three guys are guys that you want to see on the Arizona State roster next season, not necessarily because of what they accomplished this past season. None of them did a whole lot, right? Some you could even say were underwhelming. But again, I think being able to retain players is going to be huge if this team is going to find any ounce of success, not just next year, but for years to come. And I get it's a different level of college basketball. I get, you know, money doesn't necessarily like Arizona State doesn't have the, the I, I use the analogy of a sandbox. They're not playing in the same sandbox as some of these other programs. But being able to retain guys that you have only had for a year, I think is important for Bobby um, just trying to build this program to what he hopes it can be. And I know I, you're not big on Sean Phillips I Jr. I agree with two out of those I know three you're names. not big on Sean Phillips Jr. Listen. My problem with Mr. Phillips. Mr. Phillips. Mr. He's no longer junior to me. He's Mr. Phillips. He's a grown man. How big how old is he? I actually have no clue. There you go. Um he's a tall man. Just yeah, he 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 is technically a big man. He is technically a center. Um at, at the same time though, man, from what I've seen from him, from what I've seen out there, like as far as effort goes, uh around somebody who has the type of physical gifts that he has, um I'm just, I'm not about it. I'm not about it. He, he was basically a zero in a majority of the games that he played. Uh, I can count on one hand, the amount of times that in an offensive possession, he just decided to like impose his will. Mm -hmm. um, and that is why you got a seven foot, 245 pound big man out of LSU. Like you got it so that he could change the game. Not be the best player on the team, not, you know, average 30 and 15 like he's Shaq, but that you can go into a game and be like, at least we have a physical presence down low. At least we have somebody who can deter somebody from going to the rim, somebody who can grab rebounds, somebody who will put his shoulder into somebody and dunk on them. Like it just, it doesn't happen. Anytime Sean Phillips like actually put a body on somebody and like dunked, I was shocked. He's an athletic dude. I was shocked. And that's and, and that's the problem is that like I see a world where it works. I see a world where he's great, actually. And I do feel like that is, you know, that it's a possibility. And maybe if you get him like a true point guard. But now I'm just putting so many disclaimers on something that I just simply did not see. And, that's and if he wants to come back, fine. He cannot be the starting center for this team again. And some of the worst games this season, he has had more fouls than other stats combined. That sounds like Alonzo Gaffney. Yeah. And I ain't begging for him. He can't. But I ain't begging for him Thank to come God. back. Like, <laughs> at a certain point, yes, continuity is important. But you also have to understand, is this person bringing any sort of value? Are they? I think the, I, the, the risk is worth the reward. That's fair. If it, if it takes nothing and you're not going to start him, fine. But if, if he's going to come back and expect to be the starting center for this team in the Big 12, he's going to get eaten alive. It's not going to be pretty. And he'll probably not be playing by the end of the season. I mean, yeah, you. I mean, you look at the bigs in the in the pack, specifically the the two most dominant in Anumar Balo and in Fali Dante. Like those two guys ate. They ate. In and the I'm pack not asking 12. him to be them. I'm just asking him not to be 5.5 points per game, 3.3 rebounds per game. Yeah, you can't average three boards. Seven foot, 
245, yeah. only true big man on the roster, 5.5 5 points, 3.3 3 rebounds. 55% from the field for a seven foot big man in college. I think I'd cry if Arizona State ever had a seven footer that averaged 10 and 10. I think I'd cry. And I think, I think I the miss world, Ramella might, White. I think the, the oceans would freeze over before there was a center at ASU that averaged 10 boards. I miss Romello. I mean, yeah, Romello was great. Ramello. I miss Romello and Daquan Lake. Yeah, they were Daquan, on the same team. Dude, that, that, I, I talk about the quad well, leg at least at least once every two Okay, weeks. how could you not? As somebody who also was like at those games and like, like covering them at the time and like, you know, taking video, like Daquan yeah. Lake would check it. You'd be like, highlight time, baby. You're like, there's like, three let's blocks get right there. A couple blocks, a couple dunks. And, but like Daquan Lake wasn't the best player on the team. No. Like he, he wasn't like. No, but that team was loaded. Right. But he had Remy Martin, Trey Holder, Cody Justice. Yes. Like that yeah, team no, was it, loaded. Right, Shannon that's, Evans. that's all guards. It's all guards. Those are all guards. Guard you. It's all and guards. And that team, by the way, lost in the first four. Okay. <laughs> like that's what we're doing. That's what we're dealing with, man. Uh, you know what makes me feel better? Tell me. Making money. Making money <laughs> makes me you know, feel it's a, a good, lot better. Uh, it's and a good look, thing. I don't know about y'all, but I make my money on the BetMGM Sportsbook app. Highly, highly encourage you guys to go check it out. They've got a new offer for you. Download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com. Sign up and deposit at least $10 into your BetMGM Sportsbook account. Place your first wager and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. If the bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. Guys, I've got something for you. It's called a parlay picks. And look, normally I shoot for the moon, okay? I try and just throw out moon shots, and it doesn't always happen. However, I'm going to keep it simple. We're heading to the NBA. Okay. The two teams that I like the most. I think if you combine this, it's going to get you like... You might not even be at plus money. It might be just on the cusp of plus money. Give me the Nuggets money line tonight. They play the Timberwolves. Tim, Timberwolves on a back to back. They had a. They struggled with the Jazz last night. Um, Ant with a ridiculous, oh my. ridiculous, block, oh. a ridiculous dunk. And then he dislocated his finger. And then, and then he then, made fun of him post game. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, and then give sad. me the Mavs. Give me the Mavs over in the San Spurs. Antonio over the Spurs. Um, the entire country is talking about Kyrie Irving and obviously Luka Doncic. That's a team in the in the West that I feel like needs this game. Obviously, the Spurs don't necessarily need it. You parlay those money lines. Um, again, you're looking at potentially just barely plus money, but hey, a win is a win, and it's even better when it's on the BetMGM Sportsbook app. Guys, just to recap, sign up for BetMGM and use that bonus code PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through BetMGM Sportsbook mobile app for at least $10, and you'll receive $1,500 back in bonus bets if that bet loses. Check out the show notes for full details. And Allison O'Shane, talk about the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-N-Y or text HOPE-N-Y-467-369-NEW-YORK. Call one 800 327 5050 Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-UP Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF-IOWA. 1-800-270-7117. For confidential help Michigan. 1-800-981-0023 Puerto Rico. Subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Mississippi, New York, Nevada, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. All right, guys. Listen. Some vibes in the chat, and they're getting a little testy. You know, people are kind of going at each other. I yeah, know you, you, you and I have had quite the cheerful show <sighs> talking about only I just positive real animated things. today. Yeah, real, real feisty. But you might need to unwind mm. at the end of the day. And in so fact, I think everybody needs to unwind. Tacos, and whether maybe? you're, yeah, tacos. Ooh. You're reading my mind here. And whether you're an ASU fan or a U of A fan or whatever it is, everybody can agree that illegal pizza is the go-to place to get. Anything from burritos, bowls, tacos, drinks, good times, patio beers. You want it, you got it at Illegal Pete's. And guys, like the weather's getting better. And, and we're at that point where it's not going to be 115 consistently yet. I think it's going to be high 80s this weekend, which is a little scary. Uh, but that means it's the perfect time. You need to go outside. You need to go outside. But sometimes you don't want to just like go outside, go outside. You just want to sit outside. Yeah. And that's when you go to Legal Pete's and you can get yourself a nice little patio beer or a patio mark as well. And right now, join PHNX and Illegal Pete's, the bracket challenge for free, for free. There's only a limited time to get in this because I don't know if you know this, March Madness does start in March and we are in March. So uh, prizes for the top three finishers include a diehard membership, shirt, 
and gift card to the PHNX Locker, plus illegal Pete's gift cards. Go check out all of our socials if you want to find a way to go join that. I would highly encourage it. Have some fun. It's free. You could win something, something really cool. And if you do win a diehard uh, Discord or a diehard membership, jump to the Discord and talk crap to us. You get that for free. Uh, once again, guys, Illegal Pete's is here to bring you a win with their legendary sound check deal as well. You can bring a ticket stub from any ticketed event and get a draft beer or house margarita for a penny. Illegal Pete's wants to celebrate with you, whether it's a pregame or postgame party. They've got you covered on all your game day needs. Now, you must purchase an adult entree to redeem this drink, but you basically get a free drink with your purchase of a meal if you bring your ticket in. Love it. The Legal Pete's, your go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer. Look, we've talked, obviously, a lot about college basketball lately. Mm-hmm. Football is right around the corner. And by Thank football, God. I mean spring football, Arizona State. Got some spring ball uh, here in, in just a little bit. Super, super excited to get out to those fields, not only to get a little bit of a TAM, uh, but also just for football to be back, to hear from Kenny, to hear from the players, to hear from you know some of those assistants. However, while everything seems to be peaceful in the Big 12, as of right now, yes, we know currently. conference realignment goes crazy. Not necessarily the same for the ACC. Uh, so Pete Thamel uh, reported this morning. I'm going to read you just a, a chunk of the article that he wrote uh, for, for ESPN today on what's going on with Clemson. So Clemson filed a lawsuit against the ACC on Tuesday that pretends it's exit from the league. In a filing in the Court of Common Pleas in Pickens County, South Carolina, Clemson calls into question both the ACC's grant of rights and exit fees, calling the withdrawal penalty unconscionable wow i can't unconsciable there you go that's a cra- that's the first time i ever heard that word before and unenforceable now that it one. also calls the acc's view that the league's grant of media rights would allow the league to own clemson's media rights after it left the league a nonsensical reading wrong and inconsistent with the plain language of the agreement clemson asked the suit for a declaration that the ACC would not own the rights to Clemson's games, which makes sense in my mind, after Clemson ceases to be a member of the ACC. Clemson also wants the ACC exit fee, three times the ACC operating budget, an estimated $130 million, ruled as an unenforceable penalty in violation of public policy. The total cost of the exit within the rights, um, with the rights, and the fee was cast as $572 million in Florida State's lawsuit, also a lawsuit, um, in terms of the exit fees. So now you've got realistically the second largest football program in the ACC trying to bounce, right? Yeah. We're talking about the ACC potentially falling apart. If Clemson and Florida State leave, I don't think there's enough in that conference to keep it going. Now what you're about talking Stanford? about crumbling. You're talking about crumbling. You're talking about crumbling. Poor, poor Stanford at Cal in SMU that just made it over Dude, to the ACC. Okay, okay listen, when... <sighs> I don't blame people for wanting to lead the conference. I've said, you know what? Uh, we're the Atlantic Coast Conference. Let's bring Cal and Stanford in. No, it wasn't the move. It wasn't the move. Anyways, yeah, I I don't blame him. I don't blame that him for right leaving. there, you see that? When I send what's clipped, that face right there that he made needs to be on that thumbnail, damn it. Dude, I've been making some, <laughs> I've been, I've been making some faces, dog. I've had people screenshot it and send it to me, and I think I just got to start like wearing a mask or something mm. because I, I can't control my facial expressions. I don't realize that I'm actually on camera. Like To me, I'm just talking to my, my good friend Anthony Totri with, with Danielle sitting over there behind the Mac and then all my friends in chat. I don't realize you guys can actually see me right now. You know, So I got to stop making those types of You're faces. You're not invisible, my friend. Ah, I wish I was. Sometimes. Isn't it crazy, though? We're what? talking about Clemson, a team that's won a national championship in the last decade, ready to bounce. And a team that's in Florida State. It is crazy. I don't think so. It is crazy. If, crazy. if we were talking about Alabama, Ohio State, or Georgia. Okay, but they're not. <laughs> Clemson's the, the cream of the crop, or at least they have been in the ACC with a Florida State for a while now. Yeah, but Dabo Sweeney is such a piece of toilet bowl trash. Like, I, I can't. Like, anything Clemson-wise, they just, <laughs> they've fallen off. I, I just, I don't know. I don't find it surprising that, it, obviously, they're fine. They're a good football program. What do you think happens with this whole thing? Uh, I think that they leave. I I think Florida State and I think Clemson get out. I think they join the SEC. And then I think it's another Pac-12 situation where you're just out for the picking, basically. And the schools that sit by and don't get out ahead of it like a Florida State, like a Clemson, are going to get screwed like their current members, Stanford and Cal, did. And I think now we are very much barreling towards with no diversion, just two conferences. And it's just going to be whatever the SEC's next version is and whatever the Big 12 next version is, 
which they're still going to be called the Big 12 even when they have 35 So you teams. think the Big 10 also disbands at some point? Uh, I, uh, dude, honestly, if the ACC can dissolve and the Pac-12, which, like, let's not get it twisted. The Pac-12 had terrible leadership, like, terrible direction. They, they tried so many things that, that sucked. As far as conferences go, like, they were really good. They have had incredible success in basketball. They've had inc- incredible success in football. They've had off. They've had awful teams too. But like, if you look at it, like the Pac-12 was not some crappy conference. They just weren't. They were poorly run, and they had some pretty bad moments. Yeah. But they also had some national champions, many national champions, some of the best teams in college sports. Period. Yeah. Like that. But it's. It, it, it was if five years ago I told you the Pac-12 wouldn't exist anymore, you would laugh in my face. I'd say it's pretty crazy. You'd laugh in my face. Yeah. I and mean, here we are. It's yeah, we're we're in a weird spot, right? And we've been in a weird spot for some time now. Ryan in the chat, how many schools can a conference realistically hold though? I it mean, wouldn't you can't be the- have a 30 team SEC. I disagree because you look at the Big 12 as it stands right now, and we're talking about a 12 game season, three games are non conference. You're talking about nine games that are conference games, excluding a potential conference championship yeah. game. You're not seeing every team every year anyways. There's a handful of opponents that you are going to repeat, recycle um, every single year. So I think you could, in theory, if there were just two conferences, you could have 50, 60 schools. And guess what? Now you're just every few years outside of the same four, you're just going to be playing new schools. I think that's totally fine. You know how like cable was like killed by streaming services and now it just came back as cable again? Like it's just it's just cable with like different lipstick on it, you know? That's what's going to happen with this conferencing. We're going to lose all of our conferences. Are it's going to break back? down to two, and then they're going to divide. It's going to be like the SEC Northwest, the it's SEC disgusting. Southwest. Like it's going to, it's just going to be cable all it's over be again. It's going to the NFL. Like that's it's, what it is. <laughs> it's going. It's headed to the NFL. We're going to get conferences. Now we're going to get divisions, and we've already got free agency. Like <laughs> that's where we're headed. Yeah. And, and, and that's the just, playoffs. It's expanding. the way that it is. Give me a play-in game, damn it! It's the like, way this that is, it is. This is what we've got. Now, last thing before we get out of here, talk about a potential move. Okay. Clemson, FSU, you already brought it. Yeah, Those two, in my mind, they go to the SEC. I think also you're talking about Georgia Tech and a Miami heading to the SEC as well. Okay. Miami has the overall culture of a program. I feel like it, it fits in the SEC. Georgia Tech, for Georgia's sake, I feel like Georgia brings like along. It's if, if you're just picking up schools. You're picking up your Tech's little brother. Fine. You're picking up your little brother. Yeah, but it's not, like, it's not like a little brother of like Georgia's 12 yeah. and, and Georgia Tech's like eight. We're talking like Georgia's 23 and picking up their three-year-old brother, Georgia Tech. Yeah. That that's realistically where you're at. I'm looking at a rundown. I'm looking at the the four teams that you you would have going to the Big 12. And let me just say that basketball conference. That's would what be I'm saying. Hell on that's Earth. what I'm saying. Tell them what you what you think is gonna happen. I think if, if, this if the conference actually disbands, right? What did we see already from the Big 12? They understand that football is not their thing. Yes, they're good in football, but basketball is where they make their money. You're adding in Arizona, you've already got Houston, Iowa State. Baylor, all of these other schools. I think the Big 12 would add Duke, oh. UNC, oh. NC State, and Louisville. Dude. To an already ridiculous Dude. basketball Dude, conference. If, if, if a- Imagine Arizona State's schedule is Duke, UNC, Arizona, Baylor, Houston, Houston, Iowa State. They're winning zero conference games. You're forgetting Kansas. In Kansas. Oh, yeah. Twice a year you get Kansas. Yeah, you're not winning a single conference game. If that happens, can we rejoin the Pac-12? <laughs> I think that's, Please. <laughs> that's where the Big 12 goes. I think the Big 10 adds Pitt, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Wake Forest, all schools that can compete in the middle of the pack with football. Those scream um, Big 10. Absolutely. And then now the unfortunate thing is similar to the Pac-12 where you had some outliers in Oregon State and Washington State. I think the teams that get left behind are a Boston College, Stanford, Cal, Syracuse, and SMU. <laughs> um, Stanford, Cal, rejoining Washington State, Oregon State, and the uh, new Mountain West. That's going to be great. I just don't see these – Big conferences specifically wanting to add more than four other schools because no. you already talk about the media rights and, and you know the pool that has to get kind of split by each university. Yeah, more than four feels a little crazy to me. Um, but uh, again, I feel like that's that's where you're at. And can you imagine? Uh, Erica kind of brings it up in the chat, but you have Bobby Hurley against Duke. Twice I don't a year. care. I don't want to see Duke. Yeah, you I don't, don't want to see Duke. Duke. How about Kansas? Okay, what if about- what if instead of what if instead of uh, and I know that they have they have good basketball program except for Louisville right Louisville right now is not great. Imagine if Syracuse came instead. Yeah, Syracuse I could see as well. I could see that as well. <laughs> I mean, they're not like amazing right now, but there is a, a sort of legacy thing where you would imagine that eventually they kind of get back to where yeah, they were. Absolutely. Oh man, I don't want to see Duke, UNC, Arizona, like. <sighs> 
you Kansas, never know. Houston, Baylor, Colorado's not bad. Utah's usually decent. TCU. I that's conference just, realignment. No, not okay. We talk about the season. Imagine how crazy the Big Twelve tournament would be. That would be. Listen, if I wasn't, <laughs> if imagine I wasn't, how crazy that would be. If I wasn't an ASU fan, I'd be all for it. But yeah, I, I think you'd get to a point where not every team would make the the conference tournament. It would be just like the no, best twelve. No, uh, if you have 30, 30 teams in the yeah. conference, I don't know. I, it's 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 uncharted territory, and I'm kind of at the point where if I see the notification tomorrow that's like Clemson's gone, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But if it says they're stay, if they stay, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Like I don't, I can't really like weigh everything based off of what are they going to do because dude anything could happen yeah, in college happen. in college sports period right now and the same thing with transfers anybody could transfer and i'd be like yeah okay not not that it doesn't affect me or that i don't have like an opinion on it but it's just it's not gonna surprise me anymore yeah. i'm in a state where i can't be surprised boo no <laughs> yeah there you go you were surprised <laughs> guys that is going to do it for today's phnx sun devil show we appreciate everybody sticking along with us for the last hour in change on your way out Subscribe. Do what the little thing on the bottom is telling you to do. Subscribe to PHNX. Um, super, super easy if you're already on our YouTube channel. Also, give us a follow over on social at PHNX underscore Sun Devils. You can follow me at Anthony underscore Totri. You can follow this guy right here in the purple shirt at Eric Ruby. That is Eric with a K. And you can follow DJ Danielle at Abraka Danielle. She's always making the magic happen behind the Mac. In the meantime, guys, go Devils. Peace. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor.